Hi, this is Rachel, and today we're going to be doing the first day of the regression challenge. So this is a five-day challenge, and each day we're going to do one little task. And today I am doing the first task, which is to pick the correct regression model for a specific data source. So I'm going to be working from this notebook. Uh, the regression challenge day one notebook, which uh, if you signed up for the challenge, you got a link uh, in an email to this notebook. And uh, I've got some um, information here on sort of what regression is and the general idea behind it. Uh, and it, I'm actually gonna skip ahead to the end and then we'll, we'll come back up. Uh, so what we're doing today is, scroll a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Uh, we are, uh, going to train a model. Uh, so this right here, this blue line, and then the gray shape behind it is actually a regression model that has been fitted to this data. Uh, and we'll get a little bit more into what that data is in a little bit. And it is making predictions. So, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about why there's a one and a zero here. But today we're going to learn about how to pick the right type of regression model for the data that you have, uh, and also how to plot it. So by the end of today, uh, we'll figure out how to get to here and you will uh, do it yourself. So to get started, I'm going to actually fork this notebook. So I'm not going to be working in this notebook. Uh, and for you, the forking the notebook is going to look like this. This looks like this because this is my notebook and I can edit my own notebook. So we're going to start with the fork. Uh, and in this notebook, I have already loaded in some data sets. So you can see there are three data sets. And I got to this just by uh, clicking on the plus by the input files here. So we have uh, a recipe data set that has information on various recipes from Epicurious, which is a, a recipe compilation site. Uh, and they have various pieces of information on each recipe. So the title of the recipe, uh, the rating, so user ratings, the amount of calories, protein, fat, sodium. Uh, and then a bunch of uh, other columns that are whether or not each of these recipes belongs to this category. Uh, so I'm going to be working with the, it may not render because it may be too far away, uh, the dessert category. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to uh, select text. Yeah, we can't see it, but you can see cabbage. So if a recipe does have cabbage in it, this will be a one. And if it doesn't, this will be a zero. So you can see none of these recipes have cabbage in them. Uh, I don't know. Oh, so you can see this recipe is a cake recipe uh, and the rest of these are not. This is sort of the, the general idea. Uh, and I'm going into d detail here because this is what I'm actually going to be using. Uh, and there's two other data sets that you get to pick between using. So the first is information on a, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit easier. Uh, information on how many bicyclists go across major bridges in New York City. Uh, so this is nine months worth of data. Uh, and that is uh, for the day, uh, some of the weather, and then just the number of bicyclists that went across each bridge. And then there's a weather data set that has lots of information in it. It's got the time, um, I'll click on the little, little summary here, uh, so we can see that it's, you know, some days it's partly cloudy, mostly cloudy, what type of precipitation there is, the, the temperature, humidity, various things. Um, and you can also, if you're interested, look at uh, sort of information on cloud clove. I think this is probably supposed to be cloud cover, this this uh, this column. Uh, and you can also see, oh, that rendered a little bit weird. Ah, there we go, it was just thinking to itself. Um, and you can also see the metrics on each column. Oh, oh, it was, I clicked on it. Anyway, so what I was saying is you can also see the metrics for each column. Uh, so if I click on, scroll, scroll. Uh, a data frame and you can tell it's a data frame because it's got this little calendar looking thing and then I click on column metrics actually click on column metrics and then wait a little bit 
there you go, you can see a uh, summary of each of the columns. So you can see sort of what's in the date column. Um, you can see that there's five categories that we see in this, uh, this summary column. There's three possible categories in this precipitation type column. Um, here's this, the range and count of the temperature values. So it's, um, it's a nice little, little summary of what's going on in the data set. Uh, and the reason that I'm talking so much about data today, I'm like, you're probably like, ah, oh, Rachel, this is a regression challenge. We should be talking a lot about regression. Is because when I've taught regression before, the thing that's been really hard for people who are just starting out to figure out is what type of regression problem they have. So uh, we're going to be working with what are called generalized linear models, which is a, um, a family of models. And uh, when you build one of these models, you have to specify what the link function is. And uh, I'm not going to get too much into the details of, of, of what all that means. We'll get a little bit deeper into um, the intricacies of regression earlier, uh, sorry, later. Uh, but the, the important thing is that you need to pick a link function based on what your data is and what your question is. So if you are trying to predict a continuous value, so something that can take any value, something that could be, you know, it could be one, it could be 1.42, it could be, you know, 87.93, um, then you want to use a linear model. If you're trying to predict category membership, um, so in our, our weather example above, the type of precipitation would be a category, then you want to use a logistic regression. And if you're trying to predict a count value, you want to use Poisson regression. And the reason that you want to use the right type of regression for your data is because you're making predictions and you want the predictions to be sensible, right? So Poisson is for counting things. So imagine I'm trying to predict how many dogs are going to be at the dog park, right? To sort of like maybe figure out how many treats I want to put out for the dogs. If I have uh, a count problem and I try to model it using a linear model, I might predict based on, say, weather conditions that, you know, if it's really cold and rainy outside, I might have negative four fifths of a dog in the dog park. And that's ridiculous. That's not that's not a reasonable thing. Um, to, to have. Uh, so there's there's slightly different mathematical machinery for each of these types of, of questions. Uh, so let's get started. We're going to read some uh, things into our uh, environment. So this is the library we're going to be using for plotting uh, and also just a lot of things. This is a meta package that has a lot of packages in it. And then we have three data sets and we're just going to read them all in. I'm going to work with a recipes data set and then you guys are going to pick one of these two. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, I'm going to just really quickly clean the data. Um, it doesn't really, uh, you probably shouldn't need to do this for um, the, the other data sets, but you might. Um, so I'm removing, because uh, it's recipes, I'm removing any recipes that have more than 10,000 calories in them because there's a lot of variation and there's some like really um, outstanding outliers. So I want to get rid of those. And then I'm removing uh, rows with NA values because uh, um, later on when we were fitting our model, uh, we may or may not get yelled at if we have NAs. And these are all pretty big data sets, so we can, we can afford to throw out a little bit of data. So uh, I have a question that I want to know, and it is, can you predict whether or not a recipe is a dessert based just on the number of calories it has? So it's a little bit of an, a simplified question, but uh, imagine maybe we're trying to build something to tag uh, different types of recipes. And I'm like, well, maybe we can automatically tag desserts with some degree of accuracy based on the number of calories they have. Uh, spoiler alert, you can't. You do need other information. That's, a, that's not a significant, sufficiently robust model. So uh, I know that whether or not something is a cake, uh, sorry, is a dessert, is a categorical variable because cake or not cake are two categories, right? You can't be 3.42 cake, right? You might have that much weight of cake if you are weighing cake, um, or you might be counting cakes like for a cakewalk and you might um, have a count value of cakes, but whether or not something is a cake is categorical. And the best way to figure out what a variable is, is really just to use your intuition and your common sense. Um, so 
you can really get, get pretty far by really looking at the data and thinking about what it represents and reading the documentation. But there are some tests that you can do. So one thing you can do is you can look and see if a variable is numeric, if it's been represented by a number in the data frame. Um, so here I'm looking at ratings, and I uh, saw earlier that they were numbers. And uh, yes, in fact, they are represented by numeric data types in the data frame. Um, sometimes this is not a real number. So uh, zip code is a really good example of something represented by a number that's actually a category, right? Uh, so uh, this is not a, the only test, but it is something that can be helpful. Uh, if you're trying to figure out whether or not something is count data, you can look and see if all of the values in that variable, in that column, are integers. And the integer is just a whole number, like 1 or 5 or 7. Um, so we see when we look at ratings that there are non-integer numeric values in our, in our column, which probably means that it's continuous. It can take values between two integers. So it could be like 1.42 is a possible rating, um, which if you remember when we looked at them, I think one of the ratings was 4.5. So we wouldn't expect that from a count value, right? You can't have 4.5 dogs. Ugh. You shouldn't have 4.5 dogs. Uh, so the uh, link function that you pick will be based on the type of data that you're trying to predict, not what you're using to predict it. So I am trying to guess whether or not something is a dessert, so that is categorical, which means that I want to use logistic regression, and the family of the link function is binomial. Uh, so let me let me just do a base plot. So this is going to plot uh, the number of calories on the x axis and whether or not it's a dessert on the y axis. And just by um, convention, x is the thing or things that you're using to predict with, and y are the things that you are predicting. So um, what we can see here, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Uh, it does look like a number. But this has been coded so that zero means not cake, sorry, dessert. Zero means not dessert, and yes, and one means yes, it's a dessert. Uh, and then you can see that calories are along here. And because we're doing logistic regression, we're going to draw a line. Uh, and in the very beautiful classic logistic regression uh, example, it sort of looks like that. It swoops up, and there's um, dots up here on one of them, and dots down here on the other one of them, and no dots here, and no dots here, so it's really easy to uh, draw that line. And what it tells you is, for a given value of um, whatever's on the x-axis, uh, how likely it is, the probability that the observation you see at that point will belong to this category. Okay. Um, so we are going to actually fit a model. Uh, so we're going to do that using this geom smooth term. Uh, the ggplot uh, function just draws the blank plot. Geom point draws the points. Geom smooth fits a smitted line, <laughs> fits a fitted line and then plots it. And in this case we're using GLM, so the generalized linear models I talked about earlier. And we're using the family binomial here because we are trying to predict categorical data using logistic regression. So we need to use a binomial linking function. Um, and what this is, is it's our fitted regression model. And what it tells us is that as the number of calories increase, it becomes increasingly likely that our observed whatever is going, our observed recipe is going to be a dessert. So uh, at zero calories, it is, I don't know, 20% likely to be a dessert. And at uh, 10,000 calories, which you remember is uh, where we cut our, cut our data off when we, when we did our data cleaning, it's about 30% likely to be a dessert. So as the number of calories increase, the likelihood that uh, the recipe is going to be a dessert also increases. Uh, and that's what, what this line does. But it's not, 
you know, it's not categorical. It's not that anything less than a thousand calories is always not a dessert and anything more than 5,000 calories always is a dessert. Uh, and this gray shape behind it is the standard error. And this is a representation of how certain we are. So down here, you can see that the shape, I don't know if you can see that real good. Let me zoom in. Uh, the shape is really close to the line, which means that we're very certain that this is actually the real line that shows us this relationship. And up here, you can see that the shape is far away from the line, which means we're less certain that this is actually uh, the line that shows the, the actual underlying relationship. Um, so we're very certain around like a thousand calories, and we're very uncertain around like 7,500 calories. All right, so that is it. That's the whole shebang. Um, and now it's your turn. So when you go and you fork a copy of this notebook, um, this is what you want to do. You want to pick one of the two data sets, or either the weather data sets or the bike data sets. Uh, and I want you guys to um, uh, pick a question. So. Um, Oh, actually, I never showed you how to do that, did I? Let me scroll up. Yeah, I never did. All right, um, so I can show you how to summarize the data set really quickly. Mm -hmm, whoopsies. Um, or maybe I'll just go back and edit it so that, yeah, just, just identify them. Um, so you can do that by looking at the data frame in the input section. That's, a, that's one. Uh, you can use your intuition and knowledge about the world, like um, bikes are not things you can have three-fourths of, right? You, you either have one bike or none bike. Uh, and also using some of those testing little little lines of codes we, we had earlier. So um, is it a number? Is it an integer? Uh, and then I want you to pick a variable to predict and one variable to use to predict it. And which variables you predict are just up to you. Um, try and try and pick a hypothesis, formulate an idea about what you think the relationship might be. Uh, you're going to plot them and thus, thus variables within S. I need to go back and pick some typos. Whoopsies. Oh, I swear I have edited this. Uh, and then use Geome Smooth and the appropriate family. So you can tell which the appropriate family is by looking at this little chart to fit a model. Uh, and then if you want, you can make your notebook public so that other people can see it. So I can take a look at it. Uh, I'm probably going to go through and, and see what people are doing because I'm always curious. Um, so you can do that by hitting publish. Hitting publish by itself won't make your notebook public. It'll just compile it. So it'll run all the code and you'll have a nice HTML document that you can scroll through and see all, all your code and all the results. Um, to actually make it so that other people can see it, you need to switch the visibility to public, which you can do here in this little uh, drop down here. So eyeball yes, no eyeball no. Um, and then if you uh, tag your notebook, it'll make it a little bit easier for me to find. And once you publish your notebook, you will see right up at the top here. I can actually go back so you guys can see that. Uh, you'll see right here a place to add tags. And if you just start typing five day challenge, oh, actually it won't for me because I've already added it. Uh, so if you just start typing five day challenge, it'll pop up and you can click it and add it to your notebook. All right, and that's it. That's the first day of the challenge. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. We're going to do some more fun stuff. Uh, we're going to find out about residuals. So, all right. Talk to you guys tomorrow.